Last year, I posted this video and it got over 300,000 views. You guys went crazy for this AI tool called Thesis AI. And now Thesis AI, if you haven't heard of it already, is an AI tool that can draft a whole scientific document with just one prompt. You're able to upload or import up to 200 research papers to be used within Thesis AI's research to then get a fully written scientific document up to 80 pages. And so this tool is really good for those researchers that are stuck on the blank page you need to help structuring a kind of first draft based on papers that you have already collected and since i posted that video there have been so many new updates and continual changes on thesis ai's platform i thought i'd start this year with a brand new video going through all the new features do check my description box down below for links to be able to access thesis ai and also to be able to get a little discount code that they have kindly provided me to give to you guys so if you comment thesis ai i will send you the discount code directly so don't forget to do that down below so let's get straight into today's video so this is what it looks like when you first open up thesis ai you can either start chatting uh, or you can go to your previous documents that you may have uh, created in the past so i'm going to go to the chat straight away to be able to draft this scientific document you need to have research papers so there are three ways that you can do this on thesis ai the first is to upload research papers from your desktop that you've downloaded the second is using semantic scholar and i'll show you how to do this later or you can upload from Zotero or Mendeley. So if you have kind of folders there containing research papers, you can upload them directly from your reference manager. I'm going to start off by actually uploading some PDFs by myself. So here I've uploaded only seven, but you can upload up to 200. I'm just uploading a couple for the purpose of this video and to keep it a little bit quick. So this is where the whole one prompt thing comes in. So all you need to do is write a short description as to maybe some structural things that you're looking for, the kind of paper that you're wanting to write, um, the topic, you know, here I'm writing a literature review, I want to focus on medicine, the future impact, future directions, and things like that. You also want to kind of modify the filters a bit, so you can say how many pages you're interested in, and this of course will change sort of the output at the end. Um, I've said 30, I want to also change the citation style, so here I want to stick with Harvard. Um, you also can change the way that it cites, so it cites the page number or it can just cite the paper level, so just the name. You also have a range of languages. Last time there were not this many languages and this time you even have like Arabic, Japanese, Italian, like so many languages which is amazing. Um, and then you can go ahead and submit this. Now it does take between 15 minutes to about an hour depending on how many pages you want to be created and how long your document is and like how many research papers there are. So Thesis AI is fully context aware which means that it knows what is written in different parts of the manuscript. It will cross check sections that it has written before to make sure that it's not duplicating content. So this does take a bit of time because it is going through the research papers that you have provided it um, only. It's not making up random its information. It's not hallucinating and just giving you random kind of bits of information that fill in the gaps. It's actually going through those research papers to give you something that you can trust and rely on. Another way you can upload your research papers is using Mendeley or Zotero. And then it'll ask you what collection of papers you're interested in importing into Thesis AI. Only papers in that collection will be pulled out to be used in the manuscript that will be written. And you can do the exact same thing on Zotero. I don't have a Zotero account, I'm a Mendeley gal. So um, let's move on. The third way, as I mentioned, is using Semantic Scholar. So here it's going to use Semantic Scholar, which is an AI powered research tool and it has millions of research papers there. If it's not on Semantic Scholar, it's not anywhere else. So it actually uses um, Semantic Scholar to find open access papers for you. All you have to do is input your topic or description or what it is that you're writing about and it will search for those papers automatically and then it will start the writing process. And now after waiting not very long at all, I have my document that has been successfully completed. And there are a few things that you can now do. And again, this is a step up from what you were able to do 
last year using Thesis AI. So the first is to be able to export it to Overleaf. So Overleaf is, if you're an academic, you're probably quite familiar with this. It's a platform where you are able to edit your documents. It's a bit like Microsoft Word, essentially, but you have a lot more control over like the structure and adding formulas and things like that. Or you can download the PDF. PDF, of course, you can't edit. So if you just want to download the PDF to print it out or like read it at a later point, that's possible. You can also download the Word document or you can export it to your drive and that would automatically take you to a Google Doc uh, where again, as you can see, this is all completely editable. Or with this edit button here, I'm actually able to add 10 additional prompts. That wasn't possible before. Before you just had the one document and that was it. Now I can actually speak to Thesis AI and say, um, this chapter, can you add this? This chapter, can you focus more on that? This section, can you think more or discuss this a little bit more? And so I'm able to make a few more modifications, up to 10, that allow me to tailor what has been presented to me um, a little bit more. That was something that was definitely missing, so I think this is really useful and a great additional feature to Thesis AI. This is a thesis that it has written for me. It's 32 pages. I asked for 30 pages. It's given me 32 pages, which includes the contents page and the reference page. So actually the document itself itself is 30 pages exactly so that's already a huge <laughs> green tick and then I have all the detail here so I have an abstract I have an introduction all the referencing has been provided to me as well and even looking at the way that it's been written it follows a really clear sort of structure it seems like it's quite academically sound even when I look at the structure from like a higher level it's starting from the foundation so kind of the historical development of machine learning there's some core concepts and definitions um, things to do with the models, applications. Um, and so it's really going in an order that I would go in myself if I was to write. So this is the PDF, of course, as I said, this is not editable at all. But if you go to Overleaf, so you can either edit using the visual editor, which is just a standard um, like text editor, or you can go to the code editor. The code editor gives you a bit more control, which usually academics want when you're editing a manuscript or something that has a lot of kind of components structurally. Um, you, can put, you can see the file outline here, the different sections. If you create multiple documents, you can just go to the document tab up here and then click on that document that you are interested in. So this is the one that I made using the papers that I uploaded. And then this document five is the one that I made using um, Semantic Scholar. So I can download all my files, in all of the different formats as well. Now, the fun hasn't ended. I wanted to show you how you can continue to chat to Thesis AI. So it's completed my document successfully, which is perfect. And I want to carry on making some changes to my document. So here I can message Thesis AI and I can ask it to make certain changes. So I could say remove uh, chapter six and expand chapter five. Now Thesis AI will go away, take the follow on prompt that I have presented it and make those changes on the document. And then it'll be able to give me a brand new document with those changes. And I can do this up to 10 times. So I can keep on making those modifications to really pull out what I'm interested in. And every time that it does this, it goes back to the research papers and back to the literature that was first provided and use that to add and enhance or take away as needed. And by the way, this has just taken about a minute or two to do, um, not as long as the initial write. So I've removed the entire section chapter six. I've also expanded chapter five with more detail, additional examples and deeper discussion covering other areas. So I didn't even mention this, but it's, it knows this because of the papers that I provided it. Um, essentially, Additionally, I've extended chapter four to give more details on public health, mental health. Um, do you want to edit or improve anything else? And I can go back down here. I now have nine edits remaining and I can give another suggestion. So I can take a look here at the edits. So of course, this is not how I want to look at it. I'd rather look at it through Overleaf. I can see that in the application chapter, this has been expanded quite significantly. So that's quite impressive. But of course I need to read it and make sure that it matches what I'm interested in. And then I can give a further edit if need be. For me, the features that make Thesis AI really unique is number one, that you're able to analyze a number of PDFs up to 200. Number two is that it can draft a full thesis or research paper for you 
based on those papers that you have provided. Number three is that it now uses Semantic Scholar. So even if I don't have those papers at hand and I want to generate a document about a certain topic, uh, it can do that using academic literature only that it's taken from Semantic Scholar. Number four, the fact that it uses Overleaf and that I can integrate with Overleaf, especially as someone in STEM and within research, the output works well with Overleaf. So it gives you a lot more flexibility as to how you edit and as to how you actually make those final touches yourself. Like I said, this video is a follow up to the one that I did last year. And as you can see, there have been so many changes made in such a short space of time. And if you want to try it out yourself, I will leave the link for it down below and the discount code as well is Amina20 for 20% off. Let me know if you tried Thesis AI last time and what you think about it and I'd love to know whether you're going to try it again and I really hope this video is useful and it enlightened you on a tool that I think is quite unique and a one of the kind in the market and I really hope to see you in my next video. Don't forget to comment Thesis AI down below and I'll send you the link directly and I'll see you in my next video. Okay, bye.